Okay, last weekend at my granddaughter's christening, I had a conversation with two of my sisters-in-law about using pressure cookers. So this video is, uh, I guess, dedicated to them because I'm going to show them how I use uh, my pressure cookers. I have probably four or five different pressure cookers at this point, one for canning only, that's the All American. I have um, a, a fairly nice model called the Fissler. It's a German pressure cooker, pretty expensive one, I don't, but I don't use it all that often. But I have a couple of smaller Hawkins units. This is the uh, this is a six liter. I don't know if you can see that or not. Six liter Hawkins pressure cooker, very simple design. And I'm going to uh, cook. Well, actually, I have a piece of meat here. Let me get it in the picture. This is a piece of brisket. It's a, it's a, it's one quarter of a piece, the original piece. This is frozen solid. I can tell you that it is extremely tough. Extremely, extremely tough meat. It's smoked. It's pretty spicy. And uh, but it is delicious. But it's really uh, difficult to chew. So, my goal here is to, in about an hour's time, turn this into some of the most, uh, not only thawed, but some of the most tender meat that you're going to have anywhere. So, in order to do that, we're going to take about two quarts of water, which I will get here. Sorry that I'm not moving the camera around, but it's a one-man show. Put about, put about two quarts, maybe a little more. Let's see, I, I have a, um, I have a, uh, I guess it's called a uh, trivet that I'll put in the bottom. That'll keep the meat from sitting on the hot burner. I want to put a little more water in. Actually, I might go another two cups. As you can see, I didn't practice this before I started taping. All right, so there's four cups of water. Now I'm going to take the trivet out and I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of better than bouillon beef, a, a basically a beef concentrate. Just because um, there's no sense in cooking anything in unflavored liquid. So I want to get that off the spoon there. I'm going to I think that's enough. One heaping teaspoon. This is pretty pretty good stuff, pretty concentrated, pretty powerful. You don't need a lot of it. Better than bouillon roasted beef base. Turn that burner on and bring that up to high. I'll bring that up to a boil. Then I'll put the trivet back in there. And show you the process for um, pressure cooking anything, really. Give that a stir. I think the instructions say to bring the water to a boil first and then add the concentrate. But since when do I follow the directions? While I'm waiting for that to, to uh, come up to a boil, I'll show you the other piece of the, of the pressure cooker. And again, this is a very simple pressure cooker. It has a, a weight, a measured weight, that sits over top of this, uh, this uh, orifice here. And it's uh, mathematically calculated so that it takes just about 12 to 15 pounds of pressure to lift this weight up and let this let some of the steam escape. Uh, that said, you don't want the pressure cooker to be constantly blowing off steam. So I usually find a a happy medium where it'll blow off steam once in a while, which lets me know that the pressure is where it should be, but it's not constantly uh, blowing off steam. Because for one thing you'll run out of liquid pretty quickly if you're going to leave something on the burner for an hour. 
which I plan to do, if it's constantly blowing off steam, you're going to run out of water. So, um, all right. As soon as that comes up to speed, I'll, I'll bring this right back. Okay. It's not boiling, but it's hot enough to, to take the next step, which is to put the trivet back in the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to drop this chunk of frozen meat. Again, you take my word for it that it's, it's very, very tough meat. I'm going to lay it in there so that it's, it's not submerged completely. It is touching some liquid, but it's, uh, I guess it's what we call braising. It's at braising level. It's, it's partially submerged in the liquid. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. If you notice, the lid is not round. It's sort of like a uh, an oval shape, which means it has to be put in a certain way. And there's a gasket right here that when I line this up and set it down, it'll seal the gasket down. And the other end, which the camera doesn't see, I'll slide it over so you can see maybe. The other end locks in place. So now the lid is locked on there. Now I'll just wait for the uh, the water to come up to a, uh, a boil. I'm going to switch the control so that the element is actually the smaller size because I don't want to put too much heat on the outside of the pot. I wait for the uh, until I start seeing vapor or hearing or seeing or feeling vapor coming out of this this jet here and then I'll give it a couple minutes to let the steam or the water vapor uh, push any air that's in the pot push it out. I'm starting to see a little bit of vapor already coming out of there. And then once I'm I've given it a chance to vent all the air out I'm going to then put the weight back on and try and control the temperature turn it down from high heat to roughly three quarters of the of the heat about six or seven out of ten and uh, see if I can find a happy medium then I'll set the timer and uh, let it go to town for about an hour okay I have a pretty steady stream of vapor coming out of there now I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not <clears throat> But I'm going to go ahead and put the the weight over top of this jet, just push it down, and now it's just a matter of waiting for the pressure to build up enough to lift that. So I'm doing it with my hand, of course, but that's what uh, that's what will happen when the pressure gets to where it needs to be. We're getting close now, and you can hear the hissing. My dogs hear it, and they know what's coming next. So they're convinced there's a box full of snakes up here on top of the stove. So when it does blow off, it'll hiss loudly, and then uh, they will chime in to uh, warn the others about the snakes. They're poised at the gate ready to go. Let's get a little sample of it. Oh, nothing. They must have known I did that. There we go. Okay, so now after that, I'm going to start the timer for one hour. No, not one minute. Okay, one hour. Turn the heat down to about, I'll go down to about 70%. And I'll give it some time. If I don't hear it blow off again within the next 
60 to 90 seconds, I'll turn the heat back up a little bit. Because one of the things to keep in mind is that there's a, a frozen chunk of meat in there, which tends to, of course, cool down any steam coming off the top of the liquid. So until the meat thaws and comes up to a respectable temperature, there'll be longer delays between steam blow-offs. So at least getting started, I'll keep it a little bit higher, and, and as things warm up, I'll drop the heat down. Remember that when you're doing this, you want to control the, the pressure releases. I want to just let it run wild. That's how, that's how people get themselves in trouble. Turn it on high and walk away from it. So as long as I hear hissing, I know I've got pressure. Now if you're canning, which I do, uh, you're going to have a different style pot. You want to, I prefer to have something with a gauge on it. I want to know that the pressure is where I need it to be so that the temperature is where I need it to be. Okay, that's 70%. If I get one more of those within, say, I'll say within two minutes, and that, I'm keeping an eye on the time now, I will uh, turn it down another notch. So the goal is to keep the temperature set point on the stove as low as possible while still getting an occasional release of steam. That's, that's how you know you've got it at the right setting. If you don't hear any steam, there's a chance that you're, you're running cold. And if you get steam constantly, you're obviously running too hot. A lot of people love their pressure cookers just because of the, the speed of cooking. When you can take water, and as most people know, at atmospheric pressure, water will never get above 212 degrees Fahrenheit boiling. But in a pressure cooker, you can take that up closer to 250 degrees, which significantly increases the cooking speed. Um, so a lot of people like it for that. But the thing I, I appreciate most about pressure cooking is just the ability to tenderize tough, cheap cuts of meat. You know, a, a tough uh, chuck steak. You throw it in there for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and you got something that's that's fall apart tender. Of course, you can braise slowly. You can take the same cut of meat and braise it for six or seven hours and uh, get the same results. But if you're in a hurry, a pressure cooker is like having a time machine. And I hope that I'll be able to show you that. If you, if you believe me that the meat I put in there is, is tough, what do you see when I take it out in about 50 minutes? Okay, that is one hour at somewhere between 12 and 15 pounds per square inch of steam slash vapor pressure. I'm going to let the pot cool off a little bit and I'm going to take the uh, piece of brisket out. I'm going to slice it and show you how tender it, it is in just one hour. And by the way, if that had not been frozen solid, I would have put it in there for 30 to 40 minutes. So the one hour includes the defrosting time. So 30, 40 minutes is enough to take a really tough piece of meat down to uh, fall apart tender. Okay, taking our brisket out. I'm going to let it cool for just a little bit, then I'm going to slice it. I slice this very thin, but still you're going to see that it's really uh, pretty tender. And in the pot is a good bit of seasoned liquid now, some of the bouillon that was in there, and some of the pretty heavy seasoning from the brisket, because this was a finished smoked product with a rather peppery seasoning on it. 
has now been infused into the water. So I'll be using that. I'll save that and, and use that later on today for a, a, a stew that I'm making with a, with a different cut of meat. Okay, this has cooled down enough to cut now. So <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see the ends of the grain. So if this was a piece of wood, it's like looking at the end where the, the grain runs this way or, or sort of on an angle. So I'll be cutting this against the grain as I cut. Just so. Okay, so that is it. Tender. Delicious. Falls apart. I think you get the point. Mm -mm.